that's quite a crowd. I'm from New Hampshire. I grew up here. I, I, I didn't really know that we could get 10,000 or, or 13 or whatever it is. I mean, there's many thousands of people here. What do you think? All 24 hours before the primary? Well, we won New Hampshire last time in the primaries, and it was a, it was a great night. It was a very exciting night, and we have thousands of people now, maybe tens of thousands of people that cannot get in. And I guess it holds 12 or something like that. So we're very honored by it. It's a great place, great state. What do you think of the Dems right now? I think they're in disarray. I think they have no idea who it is and what it is. It looks like Bernie is a little bit surging. I don't know what that means by surging. It depends on your definition of surge. What happened in Iowa is a disgrace. And I think pretty embarrassing to them. But, uh, you know, they'll pick somebody and whoever it is, it is. And you'll run against them. I have to run against somebody. <laughs> They're going to pick somebody. You know, it, it's gotten really challenging, as we have seen. You've been through a lot. Um, Nancy Pelosi the other night tearing up the speech. Did you did you have any idea that was going on? No, but she was mumbling behind me all night long. So, you know, they gave me... I got very nice reviews on the speech, but I said even better because she was mumbling all night long and behind me. And uh, I had heard she tore... Actually, when I walked out, a lot of the folks were saying, did you see what she did? I didn't see it, no. How do you work with her now, Mr. President? Well, look, we've done a lot. We've done a lot without her. We've done a lot, uh, you know, whatever we can do. We have, a, we have great people, senators and congressmen and women. And we've, I think we've done more than anybody has done in the first three years of a term. And yet you've had to fight a lot. I mean, you have I think to fight all the way with these people. We could solve the immigration problem. You know, we've, we're building the wall, but I had to build it without them. I had to go all the way around and short circuit it. And now we're, we're building the wall very rapidly. Actually, we have over 100 miles built. We're going to have close to 500 miles built in the very near future. Uh, and it's going to be very important. We already see, well, we have the 100 miles up, Trish. Mm -hmm. What a difference it makes in that area. It's a lot, but what a difference it makes in the air, like day and night. Yeah, you've got the money now. With the we have all, we're all fully funded. Um, let me ask you, though, about the, the legal action that Attorney General Barr is putting forward now against states like New Jersey. Is this going to escalate? I mean, if you have states saying, you know, we don't care what the federal government is doing, does this go all the way possibly to the Supreme Court? Well, the, the, a lot of it goes to the Supreme Court. We won a lot of them on the Supreme Court. The band, as you know, we won at the Supreme Court. We lost in the lower courts out in uh, the Ninth Circuit, and then we wanted the Supreme Court. But no, I think some of them go and some of them don't, but the people are on our side. You can see that by the kind of crowds we have. I mean, we have a larger crowd tonight than if you added up all of the other people put together. We have a much larger crowd than all of them put and together. And there's passion there. People you know, see and that. there's passion. Mm -hmm. They're all voters. Let me ask you about the NSC, because you've been sort of fighting an uphill battle with some of those people there at the NSC. Um, any thoughts on John Bolton, whether or not he might have been connected? to or urging on the whistleblower? Well, we're going to see. We're doing a lot of work on that, and we're going to see. We'll have a full report at some point in the future. But we have to be very careful. You know, when you're talking about national security and you're talking all of the different things that we do and all of the people I meet, you can't just go out and write a book. And I gave him a big break because, you know, that's not a Senate-approved uh, job, and he was not able to get a Senate-approved job. He never had one before. And when he was at the U.N., he was, he was appointed, but he wasn't approved by the Senate. And so uh, we'll just see how it all works out. I think it's going to work out very well. President Xi, uh, I know you spoke to him recently about coronavirus. I do. Um, some concerns that their economy is really going to tank because of this, and that that could have a spillover effect here. What's your sense of their transparency right now, whether they're being more accommodating in terms of telling us what's going on and how it affects our economy? Well, I think China is very, you know, professionally run in the sense that they have everything under control. I really believe they are going to have it under control fairly soon. You know, in April, supposedly, it dies with the hotter weather, and that's a beautiful date to look forward to. But China, I can tell you, is working very hard. We're working with them. You know, we just sent some of our best people over the World Health Organization, and uh, a lot of them are composed of our people. They're fantastic, and they're now in China, and we're helping them out. We're in very good shape. We have 11 cases, and most of them are getting better very rapidly. I think they'll all be better. Uh, but, uh, no, our relationship with China, you know, we made a, a great deal, a great trade deal. 
And our relationship on top of that is probably better with China. They respect us now. What they were getting away with was murder. You know that from being uh, a uh, uh, you, really you a financial. You turned that whole thing on yeah. its head. You really did yeah. in a way that nobody thought was quite possible. They'll be buying $250 billion worth of our product that, that we grow and make, et cetera. $250 billion coming in. Japan is going to be $40 billion. And then you look at the U.S., uh, Mexico, and Canada, USMCA, that's going to be a fantastic deal for the farmers, manufacturers, automakers, everybody. I mean, we have these incredible things happening. And I think the virus is going to be, it's going to be fine. I, they're working very hard, and we are in communication with them. Good, good. Last time I talked to you in person, you were pretty angry with Jay Powell. How do you feel about him now? Well, I'm not happy with him. Uh, we have a higher Fed rate than other countries. And I say, look, you know, we should have the same. We're the best. We're the strongest by far. We're by far the biggest. It's our currency. You know, everything is us, and yet we pay more. You look at Germany, they actually pay negative interest rates, and other countries, Japan, other countries. And we should be paying less than anybody, frankly. These are negative rates. Nobody's ever seen it before, but I love the sound of it. <laughs> You pay off a loan and they pay you. There's something awfully good sounding about that. Who knows where it leads? But I will say that, uh, no, I'm not happy. He raised too fast. He lowered too slow. I mean, he should have gone a lot faster. And But he raised rates too fast. He quantitative tightened. He tightened up. And, uh, and with all of that, we're still doing the best by far in the world. But we could have been up substantially higher had he not done that. And uh, don't forget Obama, President Obama was paying zero interest rates. In our case, we were paying, you know, we're paying interest, which is good. In all fairness, from one standpoint, people are getting interest on their money they save. They get some interest on their money. It's also much better for the banks. So the banks remain very solvent, very good. But no, I think we should be, you know, competing. They're, they're competitors of ours, Germany and all. France, all of these different countries, their competitors, we should be paying the best rates. Makes sense. We're not, I, we're not paying the best rates the way they have it now, right? Yeah. No, 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 we're not. So he's meeting uh, again in March. The Fed meets. We'll see, right? Well, we're going to see. Look, I'm not happy with the whole situation. Uh, we should have never raised interest rates like we did. We should not have tightened like we did. And uh, we should have a lower interest rate or a lower Fed rate right now. You know they're gonna they're gonna criticize you for saying that because not a lot of presidents would come out no, and right. be so but direct I, with the Fed. I know a lot about it, and it's I have a good instinct for that kind of thing. I have over my life, and uh, I just look. We're doing phenomenally, but we could have been up higher. Uh, we were paying zero, now we're paying interest. So that's not the same thing. It's a big difference. The Federal Reserve position is a very important position. So he let me down. I think he's uh, done the wrong thing. And so far, I've been 100 percent right. Last question to you. The liberal media has taken aim at you right now, saying that uh, you've effectively lied about the number of injuries related to that strike in Iraq on Iran, Soleimani. What's your response to that? Well, I haven't seen too much of that. I can say this. that. Uh, I don't think they were looking to do too much damage because they knew what the consequences were going to be, with big consequences. And uh, when they said nobody was hurt, nobody was, because I saw the missiles, we saw them going. They had 16 and 12 landed, and they landed in a way that they didn't hit anybody. And so when they came in and told me that nobody was killed, I was impressed by that. And, you know, I stopped something that would have been very devastating for them. And uh, then a couple of weeks later, I started hearing about people uh, having to do with trauma, head trauma, and that, that exists. But uh, it's, uh, you know, I viewed it a little bit differently than most, and I won't be changing my mind on that. So, uh, hometown question, what do you think of my state? I think your state is great. I think your people are great. I loved it last. This was a big win for me. Mm -hmm. We went on to South Carolina. We went all over the place. You and got we all the momentum now. We got a lot of momentum. You we got did momentum really, now, too. Well, we did really well in Iowa, and then we came here and won this by a lot. And then we won South Carolina by a lot. And we won everything by a yeah, lot. Yeah, and uh, it must feel good to, to have some of this stuff out of the way. Do you think they're going to come well, back? It, it was a, I can't imagine because, you know, it's driven our poll numbers way up, yeah. as you know, better yeah. than maybe I do. You know, no, frankly, no, it backfired. You know, our poll numbers are the highest they've ever been by far. It's uh, the Republican Party, even. The numbers have been driven way up. So, uh, no, it's been just been fine. But it's very unfair to my family, very unfair to a lot of great people that work in the administration. Very unfair. You know, we've gone through this for three years. 
This isn't just the impeachment hoax. This is the witch hunt, I call it, the Russia, Russia, Russia nonsense. And uh, but it's been we've been fully exonerated. We've been, you know, it's it's good. I can't imagine them starting again. But with these people, you never know. You never know. I know. I know. Well, you've got a pretty excited crowd we're to gonna get be, to. We're going to have a good time tonight. You will. And uh, enjoy New Hampshire. Thank and you. You Mr. have Master. a great show. And I tell you, you really do. I love your show. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Trisha.